I was gonna say there's something wrong in my brain, but there are many things. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, and today we're doing an anti-haul, woo! Earlier today, I made a list of like the products I wanted to talk about. <sighs> Some of them are so stupid. Ooh, and it's not even just like one or two of them, like a lot of them are highly questionable. So I can't wait to talk about these. The last time I did an anti-haul was a month ago. And you know, just generally over the past several, several months, releases have been slow for obvious reasons because of the Pendulumala and the, uh, what, what else, the Panda replay. But in the last month, these releases have really been like picking up speed. So the last, um, the last anti-haul I did was a month ago, but the one before that was like several months ago. And in that gap, I felt like there wasn't a lot to talk about. Already, there's a lot to talk about, so let's talk about it. Quickly before we start, I wanna let you know that my nails and my earrings and uh, whatnot will be linked down below. And also, today, the day I'm filming this, probably a couple days before you're seeing this, was my last day of medical school. Ah! Yes, so graduation is officially in like two weeks. Then I'm gonna be responsible for people's lives. Isn't that a thought? That's real. No, I'm just kidding. I'm really excited. Also today, I saw Alejandro Lissette's new video mentioned me in it. And it's not just like a mention. The whole theme was picking eyeshadow palettes that reminded Alejandra of other YouTubers. And I was so shocked that she included me in it because I'm like nobody here. <laughs> Granted on TikTok, I'm kind of famous, but on YouTube, we just have a small, cute little family. So uh, I'm not gonna spoil what she picked for me, but I will tell you that the current eye look was inspired by one really gorgeous, like murky, grungy olive tone shade in that palette. Um, it's completely not predictive of the rest of the palette. So you'll just have to watch her video to see what that was. For this look though, I did use my Kaleidos sci-fi palette. So ladies and gentlemen, introducing her. All right, now, <laughs> gosh, I like, I'm kind of excited to talk about these, but I just keep on procrastinating talking about it. Let me scoot over. So there's all this space here to see the product. The first product I want to talk about is the I Heart Revolution X Disney. So another Disney collab, and it's the Aristocats collection. Um, Aristocats Marie collection, who's like the, the like white, really girly cat. I know nothing of Aristocats. Aristocats. This seems like odd to me because I, I don't know a lot about the subcategories of Makeup Revolution, like there's Makeup Revolution, I Heart Revolution, Revolution XX Pro, and they like all have different nuanced audiences or whatever. But my impression of I Heart Revolution is that it's like catered towards younger targeted demographics. And honestly, like Aristocats is kind of old <laughs> and it's not something so popular that kids are seeing them now. You know, like the things that kids growing up now watch in terms of old Disney or things like Lion King, the classic princess movies. Even I didn't really watch Aristocats when I was young. So this seems a little bit um, of a strange pick to me. And in addition to that, it's $20. Granted, the palette is pretty big. It contains nine times four is 36. It contains 36 shades. But looking at the palette, it like I can just count straight from first glance that there are five pinks in there that look exactly the same. At least on the eye, I mean, they're gonna look the same. Seeing all those redundant shades is just itching within me the urge to rearrange it because it it looks a little redundant. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I forgot to say my snarky intro for this first product. I typed it out on everything when I was planning this video. So, okay, let's pretend I'm introducing this product for the first time and I say, <clears throat> the next installment in Disney's March to Conquer the World, we have the I Heart Revolution and Aristocats Marie collection. Okay, now that I've done my snarky intro, we can move on to the next product, which is the KKW Eye Duos that are $24 each. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. In all seriousness, there is a target audience for this product, but I'm kind of confused who that is. So aside from me thinking that this is just objectively, stupidly expensive for anybody, I'm trying to envision who the audience is for this, and it's people who like don't own a lot of makeup, right? Or like use use eyeshadow pans down to the pan, they're crumbling apart because you use them so much and you need to, instead of buying a whole new palette, replace just a couple of shades, but then like someone like that is not going to buy KKW at the beginning. Like, right? If if they're shopping, even if they're shopping in the high end like range of makeup, who picks KKW first? 
I'm thinking of people getting, not even palettes, right? Let's, let's just say singles from like Anastasia, Beverly Hills, which is like a big name in the high-end market. Urban Decay, maybe Buxom, like who? Who is buying from KKW for their first high-end eyeshadow purchase ever? And another thing is that these three trios, they are like basic neutral browns and those are not difficult to formulate. If anything, those are like the easiest eyeshadows to formulate just across the board. So you don't need to get expensive browns. <laughs> I'm just like, I feel like a puppy who's confused and just is going like, oh, what's that? That's how uh, the KKW duos are making me feel. The next thing I want to talk about are these ColourPop quads. At first, I really wanted to just rip into these and be like, why is ColourPop changing their pan format again and their shape again? And like, it's probably going to be some random price and everyone has colors like this and blah, blah, blah. But I'm not mad at this, okay? I'm really not. <laughs> they came out with like six variations of some kind of neutral quad. And each of these have two mattes and two shimmers. I think that's an excellent balance. And they're each $9, which seems fair. You know, when, when you think about eyeshadows, a lot of the cost of production is not even the eyeshadow, it's, it includes a component. And so you can't expect like a completely Y equals MX plus B linear line of number of amount of product or number of shades to price. So the fact that, you know, like the nine pans are 14, 12 to 14 dollars and the, these quads are nine dollars, I can live with that. I'm, that pretty much meets my expectation. Sure, they're boring. Sure, personally, I'm obviously not going to buy these because I have these shades like a dozen times over. But there's definitely a market for this. This makes more sense to me than the KKW quads. Uh, duos, not even quads, because these are like, you know, everyday neutral shades. It contains everything you need to build just a basic eye look and the price point matches the audience. So people who don't own a lot of makeup probably don't own several times of these shades would buy this and it would likely be how much they're willing to spend on just trying out or tr trying to get better at makeup. So <laughs> Surprise! I'm not angry at that one. This also has potential to make ColourPop like a lot of money if they end up being sold in Ulta's because that's where like the consumer will happen stance upon it more frequently than like seeking it out on the ColourPop site. So I don't know if this is actually going to go to Ulta but um, I kind of hope it does. Ooh, the next product. This is a product that I was initially very excited for and then immediately very disappointed in. Very disappointed. Like whoa. What? Okay, so this is the uh, Nabla Skin Realist Beautifying Tinted Balm. So already we have a really long name. And this first picture, it had like seven bottles of different shades laid out. And I was like, oh, they just picked, you know, like some shades along the range to cover the whole range uh, for the first photo. And then I swiped and those are all of the shades. There are seven shades and the first four are like you know, a couple of them look a little similar. Uh, five, six, again, they're darker, but they're definitely not like deep. And then the jump between shade six and shade seven is like across the Atlantic Ocean. I see a lot of comments being like, oh, this is like a tinted balm and it's light coverage. Like it, like one shade, you don't need to match the shade specifically. I'm like, okay, but the, the space between six and seven absolutely is unacceptable. And, and Glossier Skin Tint has more shades than this and that's the sheerest thing of all. I don't, I don't know. Make it make sense. That's gonna be the, that's gonna be my little phrase of this video, isn't it? Make it make sense. Oh my god, that was a big shock, like a big, mmm, I was, I did not expect to see that from Nabla if I'm being honest. I don't know the price on it, but I'm not interested in buying this anymore. Ooh, okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about is another ColourPop product. ColourPop has actually been releasing a lot lately. They have like those little quads. They have the mascara, which is a thing I'm gonna talk about now. Some more of the eyeshadow sticks, brow wax or whatever. So I'm gonna talk about the mascara now. It's the Act Natural Defining Mascara. And the way they described it made it sound like a, like maybe a tubing mascara. It says, perfect wispy defined natural looking lashes. Um, easy to remove, clump free, blah, blah, blah. So I thought like, oh, maybe it's like a tubing mascara, but it seems like it's truly like a, a lash tint. And this sounds a little interesting, like it's kind of trendy, the whole natural thing. And then I looked at the promo pictures for this mascara. What they're using to market these are 
theoretically supposed to be like the best, the best this mascara could possibly look on the consumer. And this is what I saw. This looks horrible. Like it's giving me big Maybelline Great Lash vibes where it, it just does very little to nothing. How bizarre. Well, this mascara comes in a black and a brown color, which I think fits the product. If you're going for this hyper natural look, you should have like a brown option if that's closer to your natural hair color. All right, that's everything I'm gonna say about that mascara. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I just looked at the next product I'm talking about. I wanna talk about these Benefit Cosmetics Foroscope palettes. Foroscope like horoscope. This is supposed to be based on like zodiac signs and everything, but there's so, I watched uh, Smokey Glow talk about this product and I was like cracking up the time she was talking about it because she was getting like enraged and frustrated trying to figure out what these palettes are supposed to be doing because like there's so many things wrong with it. I'm just going to count them off. If this is supposed to be based around horoscopes, why are there only three elements? It's earth, air, and fire, but then like Shouldn't you round it out with water if you're gonna if you're gonna do the whole horoscope thing? So there's that. Secondly, this looks like it would be made for you know light, medium, and deeper complexions, but that's absolutely not what they are. <laughs> um, so what they're doing is I really can't I can't really can't describe what they're doing. The Earth and the Fire palettes both have the same depth of hula bronzer, so that's reason number several why this is not made for different depths of skin tone and then like earth and air also both have georgia air and fire both have solstice okay air and fire again they share a second shade which is blaze which is perhaps a highlighter so there are all these like cross shared shades between these palettes so if this is supposed to be themed around anything then the different themes should have different products and yet here we are I am really tempted to say make it make sense because this is this is one actually where that applies like make it make sense what the heck is going on here I would say that this is exactly the kind of release I would expect from Benefit if these were released like individually if only one of these were released and they called it some whatever pretty girl face palette or something but like the three of these released together and only the three of them released together without a water version is um this is confounding to say the least. I mean, maybe they didn't make a water version because it's, cause like water is like blue and mysterious and stuff. And that's hard to make fit with face products like a bronzer color and a blush color. But then like air is the same thing. So if you're not following themes anyway, just make four. <laughs> Next, we have the Rare Beauty, the Discovery Eyeshadow Palette. This is 21, ugh. this is 21, oh my gosh. This is $29 and at first I was kind of like, ooh, that looks that looks a little cute. That looks a little pretty from Rare Beauty. And I also like that Rare Beauty is at a like a mid-range price point, not super high end, so relatively affordable for Sephora. Um, and then I read the description and that giant shade in the middle is a pressed glitter. So that makes me go, ooh, like that's one of my makeup icks, you know, having a huge pressed glitter that I'm probably not gonna use. So that is a reason why I personally am not purchasing this. I heard excellent things about Rare Beauty's first palette releases. I was actually so tempted to get the purple one because I heard the, the, the formula was like so smooth and so creamy and like really, really pleasantly surprised people. I ended up not doing it because that's how things go for me. <laughs> um, but this one I'm not interested in getting because of that giant pressed glitter, which seems to be the, like the highlight of that palette. Ah, next we have the Viseart La Soleil La Plague. Plague. Plague you know, like sun, the beach palette. And wow, that's unfortunate, isn't it? So this is $44. And the reason why I say it's unfortunate is because it looks so similar, identical theming to the ColourPop Limoncello palette. Okay, it's not exactly identical theming, but it's very much like, you know, like Italian uh, picnic with that blue tablecloth on the water with lemons and stuff. It makes me feel like ColourPop poached this idea from Viseart or something because the production time for Viseart from concept to product is like much longer than the time for Colourpop. I don't know. I don't allegedly. I don't want to say anything that's going to get me in trouble, but oh wow, that's so unfortunate. I'm sure that people really dedicated to Viseart, you know, would still buy it, but 
less, less indeed. I'm just going to talk about like one or two more things. There's the BH Cosmetics Remix Dance Collection. And the first time I saw this, the first time I saw it was actually in like some similar anti haul or will I buy it video. I, I thought that it was Morphe. Like what in the Morphe is this? That was a very interesting packaging decision for BH Cosmetics. Like the component, it just, I can't, I can't think of anything except Morphe. And even the theming seems kind of like something that Morphe would maybe do. Probably not, because it's a little too creative for Morphe. Um, but I don't put it, like, it's feasible. So when I see these palettes and all I think is Morphe, I'm just not gonna wanna use them. Even if I know they're BH, like, I don't know. Ugh, there's something wrong in my, I was gonna say there's something wrong in my brain, but there are many things. Um, anyways, so I'm not gonna talk about, like, the colors of these palettes and whether they correspond with the decades because I, the 80s one definitely is like really neon-y and, okay, I guess I'll talk about the colors. So the 80s is really neon and punchy and like, you know, iconic. You could go a couple different ways with the 90s. They picked their way and really stuck with it, but completely disregarded the other half. So um, the other half they disregarded is like ultimate grunge, right? Like ton of cool, they kind of, they took the other half of 90s and moved it into the 2000s, but like when I think 90s, 90s, it's like grunge, a lot of like smoky black eyeliner. Then the other half of the 90s is like windbreakers with like lots of loudly colored shapes and uh, like strangely patterned pillowcases and that kind of thing. I do see that in the colors they picked for the 90s palette, but the color range does not go very deep for the 90s now, does it? I think that this palette could have benefited from one gray or one black color or one dark gray. The 2000s, the main argument I've heard against this one is that they didn't put in like an iconic frosty blue, which is so 2000s. And I, I have to agree with that. I do see like a really soft baby pink, which I also think is very 2000s. And um, the rest of it, I think, is just a, like a coolish neutral palette. <laughs> what was that? You know what? I'm feeling like so sassy today, as you may have been able to tell. Uh, I have like one palette that I wrote down that's pretty old news now, but was so outrageous when it was released. I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it. It's the NYX and Tetris Jumbo Eyeshadow Palette that was $45 for NYX. Okay. I know it's... 80 shades who asked for that uh but even if it's 80 shades 45 dollars for nyx shadows at that point if you're already standing in an ulta just buy anastasia beverly hills there is like a threshold that no drugstore brand should ever breach and i will like generously say that is 30 dollars in reality i feel like it's closer to 22 dollars it's also a lot of shades at this point, it's not trendy to have a lot of shades, but whatever, drugstore, like makeup revolution, whatever, put out palettes with lots of shades all the time. But the theming was Tetris. And the whole idea of Tetris is having these four boxes that you can rearrange into little shapes. And then you use your mind to place those shapes in the way that's maximally efficient. So talk about a botched theming. I saw one like mock-up, I think it was from Mia's Virtual Vanity. I'll I'll put it here if I find it in Mia's video. Again, it's from Mia's video. I'm not claiming credit for this, but she did a mock-up where it was like a 16 pan and the colors are themed, you know, within each shape and they fit together really nicely or whatever. That would have been an infinitely better decision. But even besides that, my idea is like an eight pan. I'm not good at Photoshop, so I'm not gonna do a mock-up, but like a little eight pan, a four by four, like this big. You can throw in whatever bright colors you want, Nyx. I know that you have some bright colors in your repertoire, but Within that eight pan, you can just outline in neon the different shapes. Huh? Huh? Okay, I think that's everything that all of us can handle for today. Wow, that was really fun. Wow, that was entertaining. It was like a circus. This is my assignment for y'all. In the comments, give me a top two. So pick two of these products that I talked about that are, that are your most outrageous picks. The most make it make sense products, if you will. Holy moly. Oh, wow. I'm like looking at my little list on my computer and almost hilariously, the, the picks that I have that I'm like the least offended by are the ColourPop eyeshadow quads. 
what a what an anti haul it is if ColourPop is the least offensive. The the Viseart Soleil palette. I don't have anything against that palette. Personally, not my color story and my color theming. Um, but I mean, there are people who like it, obviously, because a lot of people were excited about the Limoncello. I just think it's unfortunate the timing. Okay, that is your assignment in the comments. I want to see them. I hope that was fun. This video. I'm like actually excited to edit this video because I think it's gonna be a grand old time. Thank you for watching and for spending your time with me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Remember that y'all are my treasure. <coughs> Find the beauty in every day, but most importantly, be kind to yourselves. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!